Okay, good morning once again. We continue our discussion on time value of money. And we're using Microsoft Excel as a tool to solve time value of money problems. Uh, what, what have we learned so far? We learned about the process of uh, compounding and discounting. We said that compounding is accumulating your cash, the cash flow, accumulating a single cash flow at the beginning uh, to get the future value. Okay, and we use a compound factor, which is uh, one plus R raised to the T. Now this is different from a simple interest. A compound interest will generate, as we discussed before, a higher uh, maturity value because the time, the number of years you hang on to the investment is exponentiated. On the other hand, yung the, uh, the one with <clears throat> For simple interest, it's just a linear function. It, you're just multiplying it by R, okay, R times T, as compared to uh, R, one plus R raised to the T. So that's a difference between a simple interest and the compound interest. Okay, if you want to get the uh, present value of an individual single cash flow or, or a stream of cash flows, then you discount it. You're getting the present value means you're discounting. <clears throat> That's a process called discounting. Okay. And uh, so far, we have learned how to use Excel to compute for the present value, for the future value. To compute for the future value, we use the F, F, FB function. And for the present value, we use the PB function. Then last time, we looked at an annuity. And we said that an annuity is a uniform stream of cash flows. Here you have an annuity of 2000 for five years. And there are two types of annuities. You have annuity ordinary and annuity due. Annuity ordinary starts at the end of the period, okay? While annuity due starts at the beginning of the period. <clears throat> All right, and of course, we know that because of the differences in the timing of the cash flows, their future values and their present values will necessarily be different. And we, we are able to conclude that an, or an annuity due <clears throat> will always have a higher, higher uh, present value. And of course, since it has a higher present value, then it will have a higher future value. <clears throat> okay, so we learned how to compute the present value of an annuity. We use this formula. Okay, <clears throat> and we also use the uh, PB function in Excel. And uh, uh, the way we use this is that this formula. So this is your rate. This is your number of periods. And then we have to identify this is the annuity, the PMP. Okay, so we learned how to make use of the parameters uh, in correctly in your syntax. And then we show that the present value of an annuity due will always be higher than the present value of an annuity ordinary. And necessarily, since the present value is higher, then the future value will, of course, be higher. Okay, and th these are equivalent cash flows, which means that 241,652 is equivalent to 7239,980, assuming that the interest rate is 12% and the number of investment, the uh, number of periods is 30. And it's also equivalent to 30,000 annual payments for the next 30 years. Okay, so 241655 is equivalent to 30, is equivalent to 7.24M. Okay, so that's what we, uh, we learned last time. Okay. And we also learned how to compute if we're given the present value and the future value, Okay, or we're given a present value 
we can answer how much is the equivalent of this present value to an annuity, okay? Or if we have the future value, what's the equivalent annuity for this future value? So that we can, we are able to compute using Excel. Okay, now let's go to solving for N. <coughs> okay. Now it's just the same problem. So we expect this <coughs> to be 30. Okay, we expect the answer here to be 30. So we know that the present value is 241.656. Okay, let's just add here. Oops. Let me format this. Okay, let me just copy this. Okay, so this is our present value or which is equivalent, equivalent to 7.2 million. Did I write the, okay. 7.2 million, okay. Which we said was also equivalent to an annuity of 30,000. Okay, now uh, the question is, uh, if we have the present value at 241, okay, how many years okay, will it be so that you have, this is equivalent to a 30,000 annuity, okay? How many years? Okay, so uh, what do you think will be the function used? Anyone? You can unmute yourself or use the chat box to identify what will be the Excel function that we're going to use. Anyone, please? Any guess? FB, uh, okay. Uh, Tyler, kindly, you know, kindly share your answer. Tyler, Daniel, kindly share your answer to the class. Okay, the answer is correct. N per, no? N per. So it's N per. Uh, uh, Daniel, pag FB, you're looking for the future value. No? So dito ang tanong sa atin, ilang years? So, ang sagot natin dyan dapat, enter. Okay? All right. Now, what I want you to do is, okay, use this formula. And then, may I request everybody to please uh, copy their answers. Yung formula nila. Yung, this is a formula dito sa chat box natin. Okay, so, I'll wait for your answer, class. Enter. Because we want to discuss your answer. Kindly perform this and then copy nyo yung, yung n per function and then please paste it in the chat box so that I'd like to see how your answer went. <laughs> okay, uh, th yeah, uh, thank you for informing me, Daniel. So it's okay, right? So everyone, please kindly input input the link the uh, cells here, and then kindly copy copy the function, and then please uh, paste it in the chat box. Okay, so Marilyn. Christine, kindly share your answer to the others, please. Okay, yung formula class, ha? yung formula, ano nyo? yung formula, copy paste yung formula, tapos i-chat nyo, please, para makita ng lahat. Christine, kindly copy paste your answer. 
and share it with everyone. Ah, okay lang, okay lang, sige. Anyway, ilagay mo lang din. No? It's okay. I'll just ask you, siguro later on, kung what a particular cell. Uh, yung formula at saka yung answer, ilagay nyo rin. Both the formula and the answer. Paki, paki chat nyo. Formula muna din, siguro semicolon and then the answer. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. So you have six. Let's wait for the others, guys. Kamusang iba? So Christine uh, has six years. The others, class, I'm waiting for your... Please follow what, what Christine did. Naglagay siya ng negative sa harap, tapos ang answer niya, six. Okay, so we have Tyla also. Thank you, Diana. Thank you, Gerald. Thank you. Okay, so we're waiting for the others. Thank you so much for those who are participating. Uh, I hope the others also will share the answers so that we learn from each other's uh, answers. Okay, only four of you just keep in your answer. You're 20 in class, guys. Uh, except for those who are just using their phones now. Okay, I'm still waiting for around 14, 15 more answers, please. Okay, good, good. Okay, let's give your classmates a few more seconds and then we discuss the answer. Okay, please share, answer to, please share your answer to everyone, please. Okay, just a few more seconds. Okay, thank you. Any more answers, guys? Okay. All right. So thank you so much for your participation. Thank you so much for your answers. Okay. So let's see. I think uh, all of you have the same answers. Huh? Your answer is uh, negative six. So you have you placed negative six here in front. Some of you did not put negative six. That's why you're getting uh, you're getting uh, uh, some of you did not put negative in front. Okay, so that you're getting negative six. Okay, so let's let me just uh, let me draw the cash flow again. Okay, it's important that we understand okay what this problem is about. Okay, so let me draw. Okay. So this is our timeline, okay? Zero, one, two, and we know that this there are 30, okay, 30. Okay, so we have either a 241, 655, right? Which is equivalent to, so this is equivalent to an annuity of 30, 30,000, which is equivalent to 7.2, 7.24 million, okay? So these three cash flows are equivalent. So let me just, all right. So the answer here should be, we know that it should be how many years, guys, without without using Excel, how many years should this be? Kindly chat, please. How many years? 
should be class How many years? Hello, class. It's here in the drawing. So what's the number of periods? Class, how many periods? It's already here. The answer is here. Yeah, thank you. It should be 30. It should be 30. So I wonder why you're getting six. Because it's just the same problem. Okay. It's just the same problem. So let me see. Okay, let me copy one. Okay. B50. Okay, let me copy one answer. Okay. Control C. This my negative dito. Let, let's just copy one one answer. Oops. Oops. Okay. There's another answer here. Okay, you're correct, guys. It should be 30. Now, why are we getting six? Because we misinterpreted the problem. Okay. All right, first, this is the rate. What's the rate? B50, that's 12%. And then next is uh, PMT. Okay, what's PMT, guys? It's 30,000. And then PV. Okay. Uh, let me change my strategy. Okay, let, let's do it this way, class, because I, I want to see. Okay. All right, any volunteer who'd like to share his or her screen so that we can analyze the answer? Let me see who shared their answers. Okay, let's see. Uh, Gerard got negative six. Gerard, is it okay for you to share your screen? Okay, so stop sharing ko lang, ha? so that you'll be the one to share your screen. And then let's see. Okay. Uh, First of all, guys, thank you so much class, for sharing your, sharing your answers. Uh, the learning actually comes from this one. It's from, uh, not necessarily, yeah, it's from you following what I do, but also it's uh, from you uh, doing the problem and then we learning from that experience. Okay, so again, uh, Gerard kindly, okay, uh, please press F2 function. Yeah. Okay. Uh, could you could you kindly explain, Gerard, how, what what you did with this? Uh, so I put the rate P fifty and PMT the payment thirty fifty okay. K, and I put the present value and then two uh, commas and then yeah, that's it. You didn't use the future value. No, I didn't. Why? Because uh, yeah, here we can use either, so I just yeah. Used okay, good, pressing. good. That's correct, no? That's correct. So if you either you can only use two of the cash flows because you have to use the two equivalent cash flows and not three. Otherwise, you'll uh, you're saying that there are actually uh, uh, there are actually three cash flows here. There are only there's only actually one cash flow. Okay, and that cash flow is the annuity of 30,000 
And we were looking for the equivalent cash flow in terms of the present value or in terms of the future value. Okay, so the question here is that since Gerard used uh, the present value, the question here is how many years, okay, in how many years will an annuity of 30,000 give us a present value of 2416 times this, right? And what was our answer? What should be our answer, class? Uh, Gerard, I know that answer not. And what should be our answer? 30. Yeah, correct. That should be 30. Yeah, because we have already solved this, right? Uh, Gerard, could you go up, please? Yeah, okay, there in 31, right? In row 31, row 31. The, the annuity is 30,000, okay? And then the number of years, the N per is 30, right? And the equivalent present value is 241.655. That's row 34. Okay, so if I asked you, if I have an annuity of 30,000 for a 12% and the equivalent is 241.655 present value, how many years will it take? Of course, we know the answer should be 30, right? The answer should be 30 because uh, the, uh, we, we, were, we, we solved already for this, the 241.655. So we were just, we were just, uh, uh, we were just replacing the, the unknowns. No? This time the unknown is 30, the number of payments. And we expect that to be 30. Okay, so thank you, Gerard. Thank you so much. So let me get back the uh, control of the screen. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Maybe for how about the, uh, any volunteer how about the others? Would you like to share your screen? And let's see. Uh, anybody whose answer is different from Gerard? Maybe some of you use the future value and the uh, PMT. Okay, but you're still getting, but you're still getting uh, six. Okay, and some of you, what you did was to put negative, negative in front because <clears throat> you were, you were using, you were getting a value of uh, negative six, okay, which is wrong, right? Because, uh, because that's not the value; it should be thirty. And besides, you cannot put a negative before enter because the years cannot be negative. Okay, so remember, remember that we put a negative before future value. Or we can put a negative because before the present value, or we can put a negative before the PMT, just like this, because when we talk of cash flow, it can be negative or positive. Okay, it can be negative, it can be positive. It becomes negative cash flow if it's going out, and if it's uh, it can be positive cash flow if it's cash in. Okay, cash flow in, cash flow out. So the cash flows can be positive or negative depending on the, the direction of the cash flow. But for N per, N per cannot have any direction. Okay, N per will always be positive. Okay. You like that N per? It's always, should be always positive. Okay. Always positive. You cannot have a negative. You cannot have a negative uh, uh, anchor. That's impossible. You cannot go back in time. Okay. All right. So why are we getting a negative answer? We're getting a negative answer because our syntax is wrong. Okay. So let's do that. Anchor. It should always be positive. You cannot put a negative there. So what's the rate? The rate is twelve percent. Okay. Comma. PMT is 30,000, okay, comma. So here we, we have the option to use either the present value or the future value. We can only use one equivalent. So I, I, some students would use both, no? which is wrong. Okay, because we were actually, we only have one cash flow, the 30,000 annuity. And then we, the equivalent can be the present value or the future value. Okay, so if the, uh, if the PMT is 30,000, what should be our present value? Okay, any comment? I'd like you to comment, guys. What should be our present value? 
So let me wait for a few seconds. Maybe uh, someone would like to give a comment on that. Uh, Fiona, can you share your answer, please? Fiona, please share your answer to the class, please. Thank you so much for your, okay. Uh, I see Christine, no? Okay, so si Fiona, ang sabi niya, FB, pati si Christine ang sabi niya, FB. Okay, thank you for your answers. Pero class, you can either use PB or FB. Walang problem. Kasi they are equivalent cash flows. If you use PB, we should be having the same answer. If you use FB, still, it doesn't matter. Okay? It doesn't matter whether you use PB or FB. Remember, they are equivalent cash flows. Okay? <laughs> so, let's first use PB. So, what should this be? Uh, our PMT is B, uh, 30,000 and our PV, what should be our PV? Anyone, please? Let me give you a clue, guys. Remember before I told you, Excel is very particular about the direction of the cash flows. So there, the answer is there. Uh, Christine, that's uh, that's the future value. Uh, we can use that, no? We can use that. Uh, as I said, you can use the future value. You can use the present value. Let's first use the present value. Okay. Let's first use the present value. So what should be our present value? because it begins at the end of the period. Okay, uh, again, guys, uh, class, please share your answer to everyone. Okay, share your answer, please, to everyone so that everybody benefits from the answer. Okay, Ger uh, Gerard, why B, why B negative 47? All right, so you change the direction. Why? Because, uh, I guess it's to tell Excel like to go the other way along. Okay. To, to get All right. the value in the other way. Okay. Uh, Gerard is correct. Thank you so much, Gerard. Now, uh, as I said, class, Excel is very particular about the direction of the cash flow. Okay. What did we do for PMT? Did we make it positive or negative? Class? Here, my PMT, my annuity is positive or negative? Hello, class? B49. Okay, it's positive, right? Therefore, in any transaction, there should be cash in and cash out, right? So if I'm making my pay payment as a positive, it means it's, it's a cash inflow, okay? Then what should be the present value? It should be what? It should be a cash outflow. Remember, in any transaction, it cannot be that it's all cash inflow. So when you made when you made the present value as positive, then then what are you telling Excel? You're getting thirty thousand every year for the next thirty years, and then you're also getting two forty one six five five point fifty two now. So that's why you'll get an error term. Because there is no transaction like that. You're getting a negative six. How can a negative six be the number of periods? Okay. So take note. That's why I said that it's a good thing that Excel did this. Okay. Be because it will it will now make you uh, consider the the type the uh, the direction of the cash flows. So if this annuity was thirty thousand, it means that it's a cash inflow because it's positive. Therefore, the equivalent should be a negative. It should be a cash outflow. So Gerard is correct. correct. We're making this, neg this present value as a negative. Okay? Negative. And then uh, future value, we will disregard that because uh, we can only use one equivalent cash flow. And the type, this, uh, this is uh, annuity 
ordinary, so we can just type zero or ignore that. You can ignore that or type zero. Okay, so let's see what happens. Control enter, and there we get 30. Okay, that's now the correct answer. And it agreed with, the, uh, with what we were expecting, 30. Okay, so let me elaborate further. Now, could we have used the, uh, what if I, with, with what if I interchange this? I'll make this negative. Okay, I'll make our annuity negative and our present value positive. If I try this, control enter, you also get the same answer, 30. Okay, it doesn't matter which is negative or which is positive. What's important is that one of them has to be an inflow and the other has to be an outflow. Okay, uh, excuse me a moment, guys. All right. Now let's see what if we use the what if we use the uh, future value. Okay. Will it give us the same answer? So let's assume that our PMT is positive, and then we're not going to use the present value. We're going to use instead the future value. Okay. So I'm going to use the future value here. All right. Now again, this will give us a wrong answer because both are positive. Enter, you get here an error term, okay? So if the uh, annuity is uh, positive, then the future value should be negative, okay? Because of the syntax of Excel where the one has to be an inflow and the other one has to be an outflow, there. So it's 30, right? Or if we interchange this, for example, negative, and then this should be positive, Okay, you'll also get 30 there. <clears throat> okay, and one last thing. We could have used the future value and the present value. Okay, because remember, these are three equivalent cash flows. You have a present value, you have an annuity, and you have a future value. Okay, they are equivalent values. They are equivalent cash flows. Okay, so if we use instead... Okay, let's not use the PMT, but rather let's use the, the present value is 241, okay? The future value, it should be a negative class, all right? Okay, to make sure that the syntax uh, works properly. So had we used the present value and the future value, let's see what we get. We also get 30, okay? So they're all equivalent values. Okay, remember there's only one cash flow. And the original cash flow is the annuity of 30,000. So what did we do? What we did was to compute for the present value, the equivalent present value, or the equivalent future value, okay? So when we're now asked to compute for the number of years, we can only use the two, two equivalent cash flows, okay? What will happen now if, if we're including, for example, the annuity of 30,000. So we have an annuity of 30,000, then we have a present value, and then we have a future value. What will now happen? And one is negative, control enter, that will become, okay, it will become a different answer. Okay, it will become a different answer. And that's not the problem that we were looking at because now it becomes, there, you have a cash flow at the beginning, and then you also have a cash flow of 30,000 every year for the next 30 years. So the question here is, if you have this cash flow, you have 241 at the beginning and then 30,000 for the next 30 years, how long will it take you to accumulate 7.24 million? And the answer is 24 years, okay? It should be faster than 30 because you have this cash flow. And this 241.655 is not treated as an equivalent cash flow. It's treated as a different cash flow, okay? Distinct from 30,000. Okay, I, I hope you get that. When I placed here the present value 
and here you have the annuity and both are positive, I'm saying that at the beginning, I'll get to 41,000. And then I'll also get 30,000. Okay. And the equivalent is 7.239 at the end. How many years will, will it take if the rate is 12% for, for us to accumulate uh, these two cash flows, this 241 and 30,000, to become 7.239? Okay. And it turns out to be based on the computation, it's 24 years. Okay. All right. Let me pause for a while, class. Okay. Let me. Let me uh, okay change this to the present value. Okay, and it should be negative. Okay, and then let me put this below. Okay, so as I said, you can use the uh, present value or the future value. You'll get the same answer. Okay, let me pause for a while, class, and then give you time to, to key in your answers. Okay, and then I'll also entertain questions if you have any. Uh, Dan, kindly share your answer, your question to, to everyone. Okay, question is Dan. Uh, one has to be negative always for when finding the years. Okay, uh, the answer there is the answer there is you're given you, you have two cash flows, right? These are equivalent cash flows. If they're equivalent cash flows, one has to be a negative, and the other one has to be a positive. Okay, because you're just looking at equivalent cash flows. Okay. They cannot be both positive unless, unless uh, they're, they're, they're different cash flows. They're not actually different cash flows. They're equivalent cash flows. Okay, let me reinforce that. We only have, act, actually, we only have one cash flow. In the initial problem, our cash flow is this annuity. It's this annuity of 30,000. So we computed for the equivalent present value, which is 241655, or the equivalent future value, which is 7.24 million. Now take note, they're not distinct. They're not different. They're equivalent. Okay. So if we're given 241655 and 30,000, the annuity, okay, we're saying that 241655 now is the same or equivalent to 30,000 every, every year for the next 30 years. Okay, so the question now is, <clears throat> how many years, how many years uh, of an annuity of thirty thousand will be equivalent to two forty one six five five? So that's actually the question. How many years of thirty thousand annuity at twelve percent is equivalent to two forty one six five five? or is equivalent to 7.24. Now we said that uh, in this case, uh, Excel is very particular about the direction of the cash flow. It cannot be both positive because you're saying now that it's both cash inflow. If we take a look at the direction of the cash flow, one of them has to be negative because if it's a loan, for example, if it's a loan, you get initially a positive cash flow, but at the end, you have a negative cash flow because you have to pay the loan. Or if it's an investment, okay, it has to be a negative first, and then at the end, it will be a positive. It will be an inflow. Okay, uh, Dan, did that answer your question? Yes, sir. Okay, so, yeah. Just so be cognizant of the, you know, of the direction of the cash flows. Uh, especially when you're computing for Emperor, for rate. So for the others, guys, PMT, uh, PV, FB, uh, no problem. <clears throat> no problem because there can be, it can be negative. So if it's a negative, if you just give, uh, you're just giving one cash flow. If you're computing for the PV, for example, 
and you, you give the FB, it will give you one cash flow. And it will depend on uh, how you use the FB. <coughs> so there will be always a negative and a positive for the cash flows. But for the rate, you cannot have, for the end per, you cannot have a negative answer. Okay. All right. And that goes, that's, that goes also with this one. Okay. So kindly compute for this, for I, for the rate. Therefore, you're going to use the rate here. Okay. And we expect how many percent should be at the answer there? Plus, how many percent for the rate? Yeah, of course, 12. Yeah, that's correct. We expect 12. Okay, can could you now do that here? Class, please. So solve for the rate. Okay, use the uh, annuity. Uh, use the annuity and then let's this time use the future value. So let's see. So that we all have the same same parameters. Okay, of course, as I said, you can use the annuity and the present value. Any pair, guys, you can use, and then you'll also get the same answer. Okay, and then if you're done, kindly please chat. Uh, please chat yes if you got it. Kindly please chat yes. Good, thank you. So let's wait for the rest. Yeah, and good, good, good. For the others, please. <clears throat> okay, how about the others? I, I'm only getting... I think three or four answers here, yes. Just three. So let's wait for your classmates to indicate that they were able to get it <laughs> uh, by, by chatting, yes. Otherwise, if you have questions, class, you know, you know our drill. Uh, you're always welcome to ask in class and share your, your questions because uh, any question is an opportunity to learn for everyone. And as I said, this we're doing this in a safe place where you should not feel ashamed of asking questions because we, we will uh, treat everyone here with respect and with dignity. Okay, thank you. Diana, Luisa, and the rest who have a kid in there. Yes. Let's see, let's see Christine, let's see Gerard, the, uh, uh, Jung. Lisa, Diana. <clears throat> okay, oh, so far only five answers, guys. Only five responses. So please, I'll appreciate you, your feedback by answering yes. Or if it's no, then so it's okay. Then let's try to resolve what your question. Okay, thank you, Mason. It's good. 12.16, okay, 12.16, let's, let's see later, because that should only be 12%. Okay. Okay, so let's wait for the others. We haven't reached even the 50% mark. How about the others, class? <clears throat> I expect you to give a yes. Or if not, it's okay. Like Mixin will will Mixin kindly prepare to share your screen. We'd like to see what happened. Okay, any more responses, class? I think we only got eight responses. How about the others? 20, 21 of you, uh, 10, 13 of you have not yet responded. Okay, thank you, Marianne. The others, please. Okay, so uh, I don't know what happened to the 50% of the class. They're not giving their responses. Uh, are you encountering problems, guys? 
Okay, let me stop share mixing. Could you kindly share your screen, please? We'd like to see why you got 12.16. Yes, sir, please, please, sir. Okay, there. Sir, can you um can you see my screen share? Yes, yes, I can see now see your screen. Okay. All right. May I see your E E forty seven? Let's look at E forty seven first. Um, E forty seven is uh, here. Please press escape first. Escape. Press escape first. Escape, ESC. Okay. Could could I see your E forty seven, please? Okay. And then E. How about E forty eight? Okay, it's linked, right? And E forty nine. Okay. Uh, may I see B31? Where's B31? Mm. Excuse me, sir, it's B31. Sorry, sorry. Um, sorry, can you please repeat? Okay. Uh, okay, could you go up, please? I'd like to see. Scroll up. Scroll going up, please, make scene. Okay, 31. Okay. All right. Okay, and then let, let me see. The number of years, please. Uh, e, E fifty. E fifty. E fifty. Five zero. Five zero. Okay. All right. So it's linked. Okay. And let's see your annual rate. Okay. So first is your N per N per is B E fifty. That's correct. And then. Your PMT is E49. Okay, that's correct. And then for your, you're using now your FB, right? E47. FB, uh, you should be using E4, oh wait. Should it, shouldn't that be E48? Uh, because it's FB, right? What's your FB? Yes, that's right. There. Okay. Okay, and one has to be negative. Negative. Okay. There, it's now 12%. Okay, I think all what was uh, wrong in your answer is that you you uh, linked the FB to the present value, right? So Mixin, did that answer your question? Um, sorry, sir, can you please repeat? Uh, I said that a while ago, your answer was wrong because for your FB, you use the PV value. You used E47, yes. e right? Yes, sir. I, I, I input the wrong cell. Yes, I think. that's correct. Yeah. So, did that answer your question, Maxine? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank uh, you, sir. And by the way, uh, FB, and then why did you put B51 as your guess? Why is B51 your guess? Um, actually, no, this one is not. Yes. I just click here. Yeah, and then, Sorry. yeah, so don't put anything in the guest because we haven't discussed that. And then for the type, uh, instead of just, yeah. instead of Sorry. putting for the type, you can, you can uh, uh, delete the two commas. Yes, um, this way, sir. I think it's. Yeah. So this. no need to put the two commas there. Okay. At the, end, at the end there, so that it will not cause confusion there. So that's that's a lot better, okay? Okay, okay sir, thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Maxine. Okay, so let me get back the uh, control of the screen. All right, any questions? Thank you, Maxine, for that question. 
Uh, as I said, class, I would like to really encourage you to ask questions like that, for example. So we learn from that. We learn from that experience to be careful in, in linking the uh, correct shells. Otherwise, we'll have, uh, we'll have uh, the wrong answer. Okay. So here, let me just uh, also indicate my answer here is equal to rate. Okay. And just like N per, you do not put any negative here in the rate. Okay. So for N per, for rate, N per and for rate, no negative. For PMT, PV, and FB, it's okay. Okay. And notice for the rate, you have the guess here. Okay. This is used if you have, uh, uh, I'll give an example where uh, there can be two possible rates. Okay. Okay. N per is 30, comma, PMT is uh, 30,000. And we use a future value, negative, negative, I'm sorry. We use a future value, negative of this one. Okay, and then since this is assumed to be annuity ordinary, we just ignore the type at the end and, and we'll get 12%. Okay, all right. So kindly chat, please, if uh, everything clear so far. So far, is everything clear, guys? I'll wait. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I think uh, we have a question here. Selena, do you have a question? I'm sorry, I missed your reply. Uh, no, no question, Selena. Okay, kasi dito no yung, yung answer mo. Here, you said no. Were you able to get the answer, Selena? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so let's move on, class. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, so far, what we have done was to get uh, to get the present value of uh, of one singular cash flow. Okay, for example. Okay, for this one, if we have if we have 9.646 million after 20 years at 12%, how much is the present value? The present value as computed is 1 million. So we're, we are computing for the present value of one cash flow, or we can compute for the present value of an annuity. Okay, here, present value of an annuity. If we're given 30,000, for the next 30 years, every year for the next 30 years, how much is its value now? What is its equivalent value? Okay, now what if we have a cash flow that's not uniform? Okay, just like this. You have a cash flow that's... Uh, you have a cash flow here that's uh, now year zero. It's an outflow of uh, 9,000. And then here, an inflow of 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. Okay, what will be the present value of this cash flow? So there are two ways to do this. One is the long way, and the other one is the shorter way. Okay, let's, let's learn both, okay? <clears throat> the long way is what we have discussed before in annuity. We can convert all of this, okay, these cash flows into, into their present values. So what's the present value of 9,000? We know that that's 9,000. What's the present value of 1,000? Okay, after one year. So we will have to compute for that. Given the, what's the rate here? Okay, here, guys. The weighted average cost of capital. Okay, is 10%. So we're going to use the 10%. Okay. All right, we can give this a name. Okay, so if I highlight this, 
and then control shift F3. Then here it tells us that the name is in the left column, which is correct. So I'm going to give the uh, 10,000 rate, the name weighted average cost of capital. Okay. So if I press here, you'll see now that we have a name here. Black, weighted average cost of capital. So this is what we call an uneven stream of cash flows. <clears throat> All right. So the first the first method is just to individually get the present values. And then once we were able to get their present values, we can now add them. Okay. So how much is 9,000 at year zero now? Of course, we expect it to be 9,000. Okay. And let's just maintain the sign of the cash flow. So our formula is PV, right? PV. And then what's the rate? The rate is your WAC there, right? M per is, we use this one. PMT, this is not a, an annuity. The future value is this one. Okay, and then ignore the type. All right, then I'll put a negative sign here to maintain the sign of the cash flow. Control enter, okay. So the present value of 9,000 today is of course 9,000 also. So let me, okay, let me instead put the formula here. So that you can see there. <clears throat> let me put here. Okay, let me pause for a while, class, and then uh, if you were able to get negative 9,000, kindly chat yes, please, so that I know if uh, you were able to get the present value of 9,000. When will when is this 9,000? Year zero, it's now, guys. So we expect this to be also 9,000. The present value of a cash at year zero, which is now, is of course the same cash, cash flow. Okay, how about the rest? Thank you, Fiona. So let's wait for the others to key in their formulas. Thank you, Lisa, Christine. Okay, very good. Paila, thank you. So waiting for the others. I hope Nancy, Selena, Gerard, uh, Gerald, Jane, Patricia. Thank you. All right, so I'm getting about 50%. I, ho I hope I to get 80%, guys. 15, 16 students, I hope. Uh, let's let's wait for six, seven more students to to in their responses. How about the others, please? Okay, thank you, Marianne. Thank you, Ian. Good, Pauline. Thank you. And a few more seconds before we proceed. Okay, Jung. Thank you. All right. Mixing, thank you. All right, very good. <clears throat> very good class. Thank you so much for your participation. Uh, it's really so difficult to, to do online classes in as far as student participation is concerned. And I'm very happy, class, that uh, 70 to 80% of you uh, really are into the lesson. Thank you so much for your, for your attention. Okay, so let's, let me flash again the screen. Okay. Can we now copy this formula down? So please tell me, anyone, can I copy this formula down? If I copy this down, because we want to get the present values also for 1,000, 2,000, given their corresponding years, okay, <clears throat> will we be able to get the correct answer? Okay, thank you, Patricia. Yes, that's true. Huh? Yeah. Okay, you're correct. Okay, so we can now copy this formula. All right, so how do you copy uh, the uh, lower lower right hand? You have this cross here. This one, not with the one with the arrows. This one. Okay, and if the cells are beside beside your answers, you can just double click this. Okay, there. However, it copied up to the last one. So let me just since this is just a short. 
Okay. All right. So we have this present values. Okay, take note the present value should always be lower than your future value. This 1,000 will be obtained after one year and the present value is 909.09. The 5,000 will be obtained after five years and its present value is 3104.61. Okay, so therefore, what's the present value of this cash flows? Okay, my, I, I'll ask another question again, which requires you to answer yes or no, please. Okay, can, I, can we now add these cash flows? Please answer yes or no. Can I now add these cash flows? Yes or no, please. Can we now add <clears throat> the, uh, column D from uh, the ni negative 9,909? This cash flows plus. Can you chat your answer? Yes. If okay, no, if not. Okay, thank you, Patricia. How about the others, guys? Tyler, Fiona, thank you. Shenkuin, yes, good. Diana, Gerard, Gerald, yeah, thank you. All right, Selena, thank you so much. All right, you're correct. We can now add these cash flows. Why? Because they're now pegged at the same uh, time frame. That's a year. They're all now in year zero because they're now present values. Okay. So let's add alt equal to. Okay, that's a shortcut for is equal to sum. Alt and then equal to. Okay, it's 1652.59. So let me pause for a while to give you the chance to add the cash flow. Okay, I hope you got 1652.59. So let me once again ask everyone's feedback if they got 1652.59. I hope we got the same answers. Okay, good. Yes, good. All right, so that's very good. Okay, so what can we conclude out of this? This is positive. And it means that, it means that the present value of your cash inflows is greater than the present value of your cash outflows. So if this was the in, an investment, then our answer would be, is it good to invest in this? The answer is yes. It's good to invest in this project, in this vehicle. Okay, why? Because initially you put out money at 9,000. And then the present value of your cash inflows is greater than the initial investment of 9,000. Okay. In fact, if we add, just add this. Okay. Just let's just add this, the inflows. Okay. Our inflows is 10652.59. Our outflow is 9,000. So your present value of your cash inflows. Okay, so let's let's uh, let's put that here. So this is equal to the sum present value of your cash inflows are those that are positive there. So that's the present value of your cash inflows. Okay, which is this one, the sum of the present value of your cash inflows is this one minus the present value of your cash inflows this one so these are your outflows 9000 these are your inflows 1065.59 therefore if we sum this up we get the 
And there's a special name for this. We call it the net present value. Okay, net present value. So in any investment, if the net present value is greater than zero, okay, so if, if NPV is positive, okay, if the net present value is positive, then the, the uh, proposed investment is okay because the net present value is positive. Okay, once again, guys, sorry for asking once in a while. Is everything clear so far? The concept of uh, whether an investment is okay or not. The decision rule is you look at the net present value and if the net present value is positive, which means that the present value of your cash inflows is greater than the present value of the cash outflows, then your investment is okay. Kindly chat, please, if uh, that concept is clear. <clears throat> yes, if okay. Uh, if not, guys, please, please ask questions. Okay, thank you. All right, so let's just uh, quickly, uh, let, let me just quickly review. Notice that I did not add the cash flows, okay? We cannot add the cash flows because they belong to different time frames. Otherwise we will, we, will, uh, uh, we will disregard the time value of money. So before we can add the cash flows, they have to be on the same time frame. That's why we got the present values or Let's, let's see. We can also get the future values. That's also possible to arrive at the net future value. Okay. Uh, we can do that. So let, let me see. So this is... Uh, I'll also put here negative future value. FB. All right. What's our rate? Our rate is the what? Comma. N per, all right, N per. So how many years is this from year five? So it should be five, right? From zero to five, that's five periods. But I cannot just type five here because I, I, I have to drag the formula down, right? So that the next one should be four. And then the next one should be three. So what's the best way for us to do that? Okay, the best way is to use the five and the year. <clears throat> okay, so here I'm going to peg five. And since I'm going to copy the formula down, okay, I will have to fix the row F4, F4. <clears throat> so please ask me questions if you're not able to understand this, guys, or if you need clarifications. And then I'm going to subtract zero. Okay, so that becomes five minus zero. If I go down, it now becomes five minus one. Take note, I fixed row 60. So even if I copy the formula down, it will not, this one B dollar 60 will not move from row 60. It will always be here at row 60. Okay, so that's our enter and then comma. This is not at an annuity. And then our present value, at time zero, the present value is 9,000. When we go down at time one, the present value is 1,000. Okay, so these are now, this now becomes our present values. Okay, and then ignore the type. Enter. And then I'll copy this. So you can see the formula for this one. And then if I copy this down, there. So we're now getting the future values. 
So how much is 1,000? How much is 9,000 in five years time? It's 14,494.59. How much is 1,000 uh, at year one? Okay, that, so that means in four years time. How much is 5,000 on year five? At year five, it's still 5,000. Okay, so <clears throat> we can now add this. Okay, let's, let me just copy this. Okay, so this is now the, the uh, net future value. Okay, and just like the net present value, if the net future value is positive, then the project is okay. Okay, let me pause for a while and then I'll, I'll allow you to complete your tables. <laughs> and then please, I would appreciate you chat, uh, kindly paste in the chat box, the value that you got for the net future value. This is called the net future value. Copy paste guys, what you got for the net future value. If we have the same answers as 2661.51. Yeah, great, great, good. And I'm happy, guys, that you're able to follow along. Okay, very good, very good. All right, so <clears throat> we looked at the concept of net present value, the net future value, but more often times, this is uh, used, the net present value, okay? In fact, you can, you can check, you can check. So let me draw that, okay? Because this means that, we can look at it this way. We replaced all of this, all of this cash flow. We replaced by this one cash flow here at time zero, right? This is equivalent to 1652.59, okay? All of this, okay, all of this, we got their present values and then we added them and it gave us 1652.59. So we can replace all of these cash flows by 1652.59. Now, since this is only one cash flow, we can compute for the future value. Okay, so the future value will be equal to uh, using FV, guys. Okay, so let's see. What's the equivalent future value of 1652? So let me write that here. It's equal to 16. Okay, sorry. This, this, let's uh, use the future value. I'm going to put negative there. The rate is your WAC, right? The rate is your WAC. The M per is, we'd like to know how much is the equivalent at year five, after five years. There is no PMP. The, pr the present value is this. Oops. Sorry. No PMP. The present value is this one. Okay, and then ignore the type. Control enter. So we get okay. 2661.51, right? They're the same, okay? They're the same as getting the equivalent future values. Okay, so you can see, guys, that it's really, uh, you can play around with these figures. You can convert it into one time frame. You can convert it to, the, to another time frame, and they should be the same. Okay? There should be no problem with the computation because they're actually the same cash flows. These are the same cash flows. We just converted it to, 
to uh, the present value. And these cash flows, we converted it to the future values, okay? Or after converting it to the present value, we also convert it to the future value. So we get the same answer, 2661.84. Okay? All right. So if we have investments like this, if we have a project, for example, since for investments, you always look at the cash flows. So these are the cash flows. So the question is, should we invest in this or not? Okay, the wrong answer is you just add everything. You cannot add everything because they belong to different time frames. Okay, so I hope next time when I ask you, for example, in the exams, most probably you'll have your first exams next week, no? or next uh, Friday, okay? So uh, if I ask you about an investment like this, and then you add five, four, plus nine, 12, 14, 15, and then you tell me that the inflow is 15, the outflow is nine, then this project is okay. Okay, that will be an erroneous answer because you're adding cash flows of different time frames. You cannot do that. So you have to convert them first into one, uh, into one particular common time frame here. What we're doing, what is done usually is to convert into the present value. You discount it, okay? Or you can compound it, doesn't matter. Okay, so here, uh, what we did here was to individually, okay? Individually convert the cash flows into, <clears throat> <clears throat> into their present values. But if, uh, but this can be, um, it's uh, cumbersome, okay? And if I don't want to get the uh, individual cash flows, present values, we can use the NPV function. So Excel has an NPV function there. We can use this NPV. Okay, so there's an NPV function in Excel. And then it tells, it tells us returns the net present value of an investment based on a discount rate and a series of, take note, future payments, <clears throat> okay? Future payments. So the NPV function of Excel says, that the cash flow being considered is future, future payments, which means that it does not include, it should not include the cash flow at time zero. Because if we include this, what will happen is that Excel will read this to be the cash flow after one period. So this will be year one, this 9,000. Okay, so let's, let's correctly use this. All right. <clears throat> The rate is what, right? <clears throat> and then the values, the values of the cash flow. <clears throat> so if I highlight this, Excel will treat this as this 9,000 year, this negative 9,000, as occurring at year one. All right. So, so that will be the function. All right. So it's wrong. <clears throat> it did not give us the correct answer. So how do we adjust this? <clears throat> if NPV function of Excel only uses the future cash flows, we have to just highlight this and then adjust it by adding back the cash flow at time zero. Because we can add it to the present values from year one to year five, because this will be converted into their present values. Okay. And then to account for this, we will have to add it back. All right. So how do we change this? We will change this by making this C56. Okay, because that's the syntax for NPV. It will, it will, uh, if we highlight anything, it will only consider the, that highlight to be starting with year one. So correctly, the year one starts with this one. Okay, but if we just do this, what happens? We're just getting the total present values of this, which is the correct one, right? Okay, so to correct that plus, we will have to add, add the initial investment of 9,000. <clears> okay, <throat> and I'm adding it because it's already negative. Okay, and then we get, of course, 1652.15. Okay, let me pause for a while. Let me copy the formula here. Sorry. 
What's wrong? Okay, and then 10652.59. Okay, my answer came to C. Let me see the answer of. Hmm, sorry. 5660. All right, thank you, Fiona. Uh, yeah, but uh, we're looking for the NPV. No? The NPV is not 1065 2.59. The NPV is 1652.59 because you have to net it. That's, that's why the name is N, net. You have to include all cash flows. Okay. Fiona, did that? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, please, guys, it's uh, time. Okay. May I have just one last minute? just like to ask you if uh, you're okay if you are able to get this NPV function. Can we chat, please? Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah, good. So we did the long cut. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. We did the long cut. We, uh, we used uh, the NPV sub H, but there's a, an easier way, but that's a shorter way. This one, the NPV function. Lastly, okay, when we evaluate projects, so this is actually an advanced lesson. We're looking at capital budgeting. So we can use the return or the yield of the project. So we can use the function IRR. Okay, here's IRR. Returns the internal rate of return of a series of cash flow. Okay. So values, okay, we, we put everything there. Okay. And then we just, again, we meet the guess. When we use rates, we have this, the guess. So let's, let's ignore that first. IRR, the cash flows. Okay, we are getting the return of this project, internal rate of return, or the yield is 15.47%. So if this project, okay, the project is okay because the IRR, internal rate, of return, which is your IRR, is greater than your weighted average cost of capital. Okay. We put the formula there. All right. So the project is okay based on based on NPV. The project project is also okay based on IRR. Okay, since your IRR fifteen point forty seven is greater than your cost of capital, which is ten percent. Okay, so uh, we were able to discuss two measures, two metrics that that are used in evaluating projects. Okay, just to summarize, for projects you have to use cash flows. Okay, you cannot add the cash flows that occur in different time frames. You have to convert them, either the present values or the future values, okay, and then add them. The sum of these present values is called your net present value. Okay, you can use also the NPV function of Excel. If the net present value is positive, then the project is okay. You can also use the IRR, and the formula is very easy: IRR and highlight the cash flows. And if the IRR is greater than the cost the cost of the company to get funding, which is 10%, then the project is okay. All right? Okay, so very good. Thank you so much, class, for let me, let me stop recording.